with them now. Hi, Boris. 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 Alu. Been on the Mediterranean Sea for nearly 100 nautical miles. Wow, nothing yeah. like this. Yeah, and then this is also as well. I'm very impressed by the people I see. Hello, hello, These guys are skilled. Yeah, they're very skilled. Ah, you come a little bit. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you yeah, he's taking you. This is uh, you know, this is what I have no order. Yeah, we are taking
when he came home, he didn't like the way he was received. Okay. We actually
And uh, the next to him is Aishi, is another Aishi, the man who served the king. The man who they give the authority to serve the king. Without him, nobody. There's no other person than Aishi. And next to him again is also another high ship. It's no other person than uh, Modi Okuma, the power of the Subri. I also have another man, is chief of Fairy. Hallelujah. And we also have my gentleman who has been doing the security job, is uh, Chief Bewe. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Another man, Chief Deeper yes. from Amapere, who introduced himself to you. Yes. Is there with us? Yeah, as we are. Uh, lastly, ah. <laughs> Yeah, I will snap in to just the two persons that are come to the judgment. It is uh, Aishi Javier Tipori, the Abba of Agogri. Hallelujah. It's another Aishi Tiki from uh, Uparama Hen Extraction. From Uparama Extraction. It's no other person, Aishi Elimi. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think the time is not on our side. Myself introducing. My high chief to you, I am also high chief by speaking and also a political scientist. Wow. You are welcome. Thank you. So, on that note, because the time is not on our side, I think I want somebody from your empire to introduce briefly those who are here with you to the parties. Thank you very much, uh, Your Royal Highness. I'm uh, the High Chief uh, here today. I will do the introduction myself of uh, our team. We are a team of young people from all over Nigeria. My name is Omoyele Chiwara. Okay. I am uh, I'm from Kiribo. Yeah. So I am a Joe Akoi, as you are aware. Uh, and uh, as far as the Joes are concerned, the Akois are the first clan from this part of the world. Uh, but uh, sadly, we don't speak the, the Jaw language as you do. But my father speaks the Jaw, uh, and uh, my mom also speaks uh, the Jaw. But we don't because uh, we have been polluted by Yoruba. <laughs> uh, to my left, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I'm very original on the inside. That's right. Yes. But my left is uh, Dr. Rabiu Ufai who is the vice presidential candidate of our party. I'm the presidential candidate. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. I'm the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, the new political party, African Action, it's called yes. AAC. And uh, we decided that uh, before we can go too far into Nigeria, we must come home first and meet with our people. We must meet with our leaders and our traditional rulers to get your blessing, number one, and to help us mobilize all of our people by informing them that their son is going to Abuja to do justice to what all of us have been fighting for, for justice to spread everywhere, but most importantly, importantly to the Niger Delta region, our area. I must confess that even though I am 15 kilometers from here, I've never been to this place before. Yes. The reason is that it is easier to go to Lagos than to come to Aruba because of the transportation difficulties. And we saw it today that a journey that should have lasted only 15 or 20 minutes from Kiribo lasted almost an hour. We had to take a boat between Agadagba and uh, this will not have happened at all. For a region that is the biggest or the largest producer of uh, what we know as the golden earth in Nigeria. So, without dragging this further, it is also in our view that as young people, it is the time of our generation for there to be a generational change in this country. A generation that has a dream for a better future. 
not only for young people but for all people, are now prepared to take on the mantle of leadership. I know that the next thing somebody will tell you is that an Ijeoma man has been president before. Well, that may be true, but there has not been a young Ijeoma man like myself who is about to become the president of Nigeria. And that is very important. Uh, and also, they might have told you that an Ijeoma man has done it before. You have lost your chance. No. Our chance has not been redeemed until the proper development we deserve has been brought to everybody that is living in this part of the world. And they have to do with ensuring that we have security for our people. That to have infrastructure, I'm making a promise today that as soon as I become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I will give a contract transparently that Agadagba is linked to this place by a bridge. That one is composed for us. And that the next time we come here, even though this is my home, we are going to drive directly to your palace in a vehicle Thank you. instead of having to take a boat. I am not against the boat. I love water. We must preserve our water and we must make sure that they are clean and not polluted. But there's nothing wrong with a bridge linking Agaragba with the mainland here. And I know that these promises have been made in this palace to you several times. But the reason why my own is different is that there's nothing that I've ever said before as a young person that I did not implement. And they may not have met you before, but I know that probably I have a little reputation that you must have heard about before. Uh, one of uh, uh, several of uh, the indigenous of this place went to the University of Lagos with me when I was a student union leader. And as a lawyer yourself, as I've been to, you probably have heard about Sahara Reporters, uh, before, which I published for over 12 years before I started running for office. So I know you don't have time, uh, but I want to thank you. This is very important for giving us the opportunity to appear before you today, taking our time to see us. We have to say to you that uh, because we look young, uh, sometimes we have been disrespected, yes, in this country, uh, by traditional institutions. They said, you know, they are the small people. Whereas they go and wait for other candidates at the airport, they wait for us to see them, and when we come and see them, they don't even see us. But you have shown to us that you believe in the future. And that future is going to happen to this your palace very soon, starting from next year. And we have come to see you that the promise of a better future, of a better Nigeria is coming. But we know that it cannot be delivered by people who have done it before, who have disappointed and who are recycling themselves. So because we know that an attempt to be made for other candidates to come and lie again in your palace. If they come, anybody has come before and said they would do bridge for you and they didn't do it, carry them to go and meet a place soon to swear in front of the industry that they will deliver on their promise. You will see that they will run away. <laughs> because these are a bunch of liars who have lied to our people. And that is the reason why even though we are the biggest producer of wealth in this country, we are the poorest people on the continent of Africa, if not the world. I'm saying it because I grew up here and I know what I suffered to go to primary school. I know what I suffered to go to secondary school. I finished secondary school, they closed down the secondary school to go there. I know what I suffered to go to university. I know what I suffered after I finished university, there was no job for me. I once went for an interview at an oil company and they asked me, why don't you have a first class degree? Because we only hire first class degree graduate. And I told them, if you do what you do in our own environment, we drink the kind of water we drink. We drive on the roads we drive. We go to schools without teachers. How can we have first class degree mm -hmm. when we go to the They were looking at me. But the opportunities for oil companies are not meant for our people. It's meant for outsiders. It's meant for people who are not even from this region. If you look at all the appointments made in the refining sector, in the producing sector, they are not from here. They reside